I like games, small, medium, large. I'm not going to hit them all, spit them all, or get them all, but I'm damned well going to try to give them all a bit of time in the sun. That's what these videos are, some eyes on new indie games. Coming out soon so you can track them or back them or buy them and then ignore them in your Steam library. That means you, Rajaku. If you like this channel, check out the sweet merch we got on the page. What kind of player are you? Pick a kind. I'm sure it's represented. Enjoy a soft shirt for your hard demeanor and support the channel. Or hit subscribe. Let's do this. Beneath Oressa. Early access on the third from Broken Spear, Beneath Aressa builds itself as a fighting roguelike deck builder. Takes you deep into a city to confront your foes. As a strategist, you get to choose your cards, your upgrades, and your artifacts wisely. But as a fighter, turn their positioning to your advantage. I bill it as a sweet-ass card game where every move you do looks like an action game fighting in the depths of a fantasy world that mixes steampunk, demons, and swords the size of the adult men who wield them. If you made a recipe called Kick-Ass, it'd probably look something like this. A battling roguelike deck builder that takes place beneath this massive city. You take the fight to your enemies in genuine tactical battlefields buried deep inside a metropolis. As a tactician, you can make smart choices about your cards, your upgrades, those artifacts. But as the warrior kind of character, you can maintain safe distance from your opponents, attack them at optimal times, and use their placement at your advantage. All of that playing out on the screen in front of you. And every single time you go back down, you need to choose a new hero to travel with you. Each hero has eight special abilities to provide to you as an ally, so everything continually gets switched up. There's hundreds of different pair-ups that you can choose, giving you a lot of room to experiment with the play styles and see what works best for you or what you just want to experiment with. Is a proto-blacksmith who can improve your card upgrades more useful or a boss-fighting expert and just hoping you get there? Each time a new card or ability comes up, you have to decide what one gets printed. You have to make a strategic decision between two different options for every single card upgrade. And it's important to choose properly, especially taking into account the way you want to enjoy the game. But the game's devs have let this one's trailers do a lot of the talking for them. And while I think that's awesome because it looks damn cool, I also wonder if word should have been spread more, especially with early access being so filled to the brim with chum of every cheap ass shark dev for 4,000 miles filling it up with their crap. I don't want this one to get lost, so that's why it's number one on this list. Number two on this list, or B, Pocket Bravery. Now, this might be the best idea for a game ever. Little pissy dudes that look like they can fit in your pocket, but they're coming back in a 2D retro style, almost like a Streets of Rage. Be aware this game is going to look cranky old right from the get-go. It features different characters, bright colors, and a battle system inspired by classic arcade games of the 90s. And it's a unique take on that older standard definition fighting genre. So be expecting that. Designed to appeal to seasoned gamers while simultaneously providing tools for teaching newcomers the ropes, this game is going to have a variety of different ways for different people to jump in and engage with it. It should remind you of titles like Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, and King of Fighters because that is the inspiration for Pocket Bravery. Also, the Neo Geo Pocket Color fighting game Pocket Fighter and others like that are going to remind you definitely of this title. And there's also super specials, final assault, special techniques, and it sounds like even boss characters in this game. I love the look of it and the idea of going that far back to me is actually quite interesting. I know that this particular graphic style might turn some people off. Pocket Bravery actually looks very cool. Next up, Chance of Sonar. Now, not a ton is known about this. It's coming out in 2023 by Run Disc as the developer. The publisher is Focus Entertainment. Since the dawn of time, the inhabitants of the tower have been at odds with one another, and to this day, they rarely recognize one another's existence. It's necessary for you to figure out this puzzle game, destroy the barriers, and it's essential to reestablish the balance between these two different groups. And so much time has passed with these groups battling that they've forgotten their actual origins and histories. And you're going to be able to discover all this with the various puzzles. This one looks a lot like Sable in its overall graphics design. You have to decipher ancient texts and go off and figure out the puzzles and teach the two groups exactly why it is that you probably don't want to sit there battling all day. But it's not just that. There's actually some stealth, not necessarily combat, but some stealth involved in this title. It looks awesome to me. I love that graphic style, but there is a lot of unknowns on this. Just a couple trailers, a couple smaller interviews. I can't wait to check it out, though. Next up, Ghost Song by Old Moon and Humble Games comes out November 3rd, supposedly for PC, but not quite sure about any other consoles. Ghost Song is a 2D atmospheric journey about finding yourself, uncovering ancient secrets, and facing cosmic fear. Discover the long-lost mysteries of an alien planet as you go through these twisting turns and passageways lighted up by bioluminescent vegetation, fighting 
creatures and developing new skills. But in this game, to get to the bottom of something, you have to actually go to the bottom of something. You have to explore the complexes to unlock hidden rooms and a spooky backstory is there to keep you consistently moving forward. You have to find the different layers of the moon, optional secret places, as well as acquiring powerful weapons and game-changing new powers that allow for you to unlock more of this secretive story. This one looks absolutely creepy to me, cosmic future horror. In fact, there's moments of it that remind me a little bit of Returnal. That might just be the color spectrum itself that they're using. I'm loving everything I'm seeing about this one. It's got a little bit of that jank ass feel but we'll just have to see when it finally comes out if that continues in but i like these kind of games especially if they keep that mystery level super high and next up a game that's probably got really no mystery at all we who are about to die it's time to get your portly russell crow on baby this is by jordy and published by jordy it's just a person on their own doing all this november 15th of 2022 so here not too long away prepare to relearn how to do battle gladiators are expected to die so there's no need to fear death this game is a robust physics-based fighting system that was built from the bottom up to be different than many other fighting games a player takes control of a single life gladiator and guides him to her or his certain death. So expect to die. Fight your way up from the pits to the arena to the stadium, wow an ever larger audiences until you get hailed as a grand stadium legend or like most of us, die thousands of times on the way there. But there's some RPG elements here. Random occurrences. You got to choose your next match. Appease wealthy patrons. Win over the masses. Build your own academy. Establish a training regimen. Pay people for information, employ experts, and do a ton more, as well as learning new techniques, acquiring different weapons and equipment, and pleasing the audience to get more money. There's also randomly generated venues of various sizes and designs as you continue to play this. There's a lot of randomness here to keep you feeling like every time you return, even if you do die, there's going to be something new and rewarding there for you as you rank up. Also, the game continually throws different numbers of characters at you, so you're not just fighting one gladiator against one, but you might be fighting multiple enemies at any one particular time. This is one of those titles that came out of nowhere for me, and the more I've seen of it, the more I absolutely love the way it looks. Next up, Sons of the Forest. This is by In Night Games, and it's February 2023, we hope, and this is, of course, a sequel or a new adventure from the creators of The Forest. Of course, there's a throwaway story. You're sent to an isolated island in search of a missing millionaire, but instead you discover a cannibal paradise. And I don't really understand the words cannibal paradise. Put together, it sounds like a band name, not a place you want to visit. But here you are. You get to create and construct and fight for your existence in a new, open-world, horrifying survival simulator, either alone or, of course, in multiplayer. This is one of those kind of games where you go around chopping down trees at the same time fighting off strange horrors in the background. Not horrors, but horrors. And then you go back and you build up your town. Or for me, you just build four walls and probably don't put a door in and they get slaughtered. They're going to have all kinds of weapons, including pistols, axes, stun batons, and others. And you're going to be able to invite friends with you to help you build and create communities. This is one of those titles that I wasn't a huge fan of the original Forest. I played it a lot. There were some parts I really liked, but I felt it was a little janky. Sons of the Forest, the more I look at it, does seem to me like they've looked at the problems and they're trying to move forward. We'll just have to see these kind of games. You never exactly no, but it is released scheduled at least for early access in February. So we'll all get a chance to check it out. One other one that's coming out in February that is phenomenal. I cannot wait for this Kerbal Space Program number two by Intercept Games and Private Division. A decade after its initial launch, Kerbal Space Program is one of the most critically acclaimed video games of all time. That's what they say. But Kerbal Space Program 2 is a complete overhaul that builds on the roots of the first game while updating it to reflect the needs of present and future generation space exploration. Explore the vastness of the cosmos as you create your own space program, build mighty ships, and travel to distant planets. New engines, components, fuel, and more will become available to players when the game is updated to reflect the latest technological advancements. So that means if something comes about because Elon Musk launches a ship, I'm supposing it'll get into this game. Cutting edge technology won't simply open up fresh challenges for gamers to tackle. It also paved the way for bold new space expeditions, both within and beyond the system that you start in. 
Another thing that's completely new here is colonies. It's a completely new addition. Colonies provide their own physics problems as well as needs resources, collections to construct the buildings, space stations, homes, and other fuel sources. They develop their own technology to build vehicles, which then, of course, further space travel as well as planet exploration. And the developers say that Kerbal Space Program 2 will include the much requested feature of multiplayer thanks to technological advancements made to the game's underpinning, which also improve upon the first game's modding capabilities. So we're just going to have to see this one. Kerbal Space Program is highly popular. The number of people I know who play that is probably the number of people I know. They're probably identical. There is a huge fan base for this, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to it. So anyway, I want to know what you guys think. What are some indie games that I've missed? Because I'm sure I have. Like I said at the starting, can't hit them all. What do you guys want to see? What are you guys going to get in November, December? Some of these are even farther out, of course. January, February. Keep throwing game ideas to me. Keep tossing those in. Go to Twitter. Make sure that you link the developer and tell them that we're doing these videos because it helps get them people to look at their games as well. I'd like to know what you guys think. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it a lot, subscribe and make sure to continue gaming. Enjoy yourselves. Peace out and have a good week.